Welcome back to Mystical Sisterhood. This is your host, Maureen Spielman. In this newest of new years, how about we pledge to tune into our essential birthrights? Birthrights being the aspects of you that you came into this world with and cannot be taken from you ever. They are who you are. They are often what's been covered up and maybe even buried along the way. And here you find yourself wanting to shine and uncover those beautiful essential truths of who you are and just getting to live to your full potential in whatever area of your life you are wanting to experience more authenticity. Would you begin to believe that you arrived into this world, however many years ago it was, with innocence, beauty, worthiness, and wholeness, to name just a few qualities. What is your relationship to those parts of you now? Do you feel innocent? Do you know you are beautiful? And on any given day, do you know you are whole as you are? No need to fix or change any part of you. And how worthy do you feel of it all? Today, I'll be digging a little deeper into the essential truths of who you are and what gets in the way of living from these truths. Stick around as I dive into this juicy and timely topic in this new year. So as we dive in to episode 54, I'm wondering some questions. And the first one is a general question of how worthy do you feel of living in a way that feels very authentic to you. And I think that this question can be a little deceiving because it seems so straightforward. And I have to say that the answer that I typically hear from this, and even in conversations is, I feel really worthy. Like, what are you talking about, Maureen? And it seems so straightforward. But I believe with any of these kind of questions that we pose in life, in life coaching, that they're very layered and quite complex. And so we can't just get to the answer, you know, in a nanosecond. It's it's the process and the work that we do to discover of like, okay, maybe that is a layered question. And do I feel worthy? And if I'm experiencing challenge in my life, what are the patterns that get in my way? So today I decided as we launch into the second year of Mystical Sisterhood to revisit the topic of worthiness and dive in a bit to the limiting patterns and limiting beliefs that we hold, sometimes unbeknownst to us if they've been sort of unstudied yet, you know, uh, unexamined within. And I was thinking about talking about limiting beliefs and that, and then I recalled that, yes, of course, the first interview that I had last year was with Susie Lula, my mentor and teacher and friend, and it was episode four. You can go back to it, and I highly recommend that you do, and we named it You Are Worthy. I invite you to listen as you begin 2024 to some of the messages in that, but we discussed in depth how your worth can be tied up in your outer worlds, you know, the clothing you wear, the degrees you hold, maybe your kids' accomplishments, your job, versus our inner world, your inner world, and the focus on what is happening inside inside of us and where we are being called to uncover our truths. So uh, like I said, I don't think that they all can be simply answered. Social media or cultural conditioning might suggest that there's a quick fix. You know, we're seeing this stuff all the time. We're seeing like these amazing quotes. Um, you know, I do this on my social media, but amazing quotes or guiding lights or, you know, questions that are opening our mind. And I think that we can do a number on ourselves and be hard on ourselves thinking like, gosh, dang it, I should have had this figured out by now. But what if we began to seek um, a compassionate way of being with ourselves, but also a knowing that we're all in our own process, on our own timeline, and to have patience with the process. I think I may have named that recently in an episode as something important. And I think, you know, critical as we are walking ourselves along this path of life. 
And these avenues like social media or newsletters or articles or blogs we read, we might be led to think if we just set an intention or create a resolution or say, oh, this year I'm going to accomplish this, that that's going to happen. And I, what I found in my own experience and working with clients and, you know, in conversations with my sisters is that it is not linear. It's circuitous. It's meandering. It's not, it's not just always so simple and, um, uh, wrap it up with that red bow, that bow that makes it all perfect, right? It's a process. And uh, if you're like me, uh, you've been frustrated with yourself along the way of parts of these process. But this year on the podcast, what I'm going to be doing a little bit is injecting, you know, the episodes with my voice and what I experience in my life and in my coaching practice and just what I'm seeing in general and then how that applies to our lives and interjected with amazing interviews with amazing women. And I'm really just excited how this is going to unfold. So let's talk about what might be holding you back just to shine a light on it. These are not bad things or wrong things or negative things about ourselves, but they are patterns that we might be in that really keep us from feeling the way we want to feel achieving what we want to achieve within our own lives. And it's the ingrained belief systems that can really truly hold us back and keep us from that big, wide, abundant field of possibilities and, you know, really manifestation that's waiting for us. So I'm going to go back and I mentioned it at the start when I said the word birthright, that was a word that came across my conversations early on. And I'm like, what's that word? We did not talk about that when I was growing up through all my years. And so when I started hearing it, even I will call it like, like 10 years ago, I was like, what's that? What's that word? But the way I think about birthrights are something that you were absolutely born with, but that's universal to all of us. Um, so they're the things like the wholeness, your innocence, um, your abundant nature, your worthiness, all of it that you were born with. And it's not anything that anyone can really ever take away from you. You might not even be aware that that's all part of the essential you. And it's through the process of life coaching that I guide clients down the path of really looking at what are these limiting beliefs? What are these patterned ways of thinking? They are sneaky. They uh, work their way into our mind, into our psyche, and they we might start making forward pro progress on something and then it reins us back in that that you know some people call it the ego, but they're just the limiting, thoughts that we took on. So depending on what's occurred in your life and what went down in your family of origin, stories that were told in your family about perhaps what was acceptable, what was tolerated, what was exalted, uh, were there you know, personality traits that were better than others, what things were put down. And, and the thing about it is, that was in the energy, that was in the ethers, that was, you know, you're just this little kid absorb, absorbing it all. And the thing that's really striking to me as an adult is we might look back and say like, oh, this happened in my youth or this happened or that occurred or, oh yeah, that my parents would talk about that. But I really think that it was so much in our messaging that it so deeply ingrained in us. And it's no wonder that we sometimes feel like we're fighting our like, way out of a paper bag as adults. Like, will I ever make sort of forward momentum of it? That feeling of like feeling stuck and I can't move and I can't get clarity on something. But to me, it's so understandable that these patterns are really difficult to break through and I'll hold the field for entirely possible with care and compassion and commitment to ourselves. But it's so understandable that 
we can be feeling like, oh my gosh, this is an uphill battle or shaming ourselves for why have I been dealing with this for so long? So I'm holding you in a really compassionate container of, of course, non-judgment, but just like, oh, I see you for all of those conversations you overheard and all the belief systems that developed within you based on what you were surrounded with you know, as part of what we do here. And it's not to say that there were not times that you and your strengths and what you kind of came for, forward with as an individual and a child were, um, th they those may have well been celebrated too. And that's been a really positive um, part of your identity that propels you forward. It's the limitations or ways in which you had to do or behave um as a young person to feel seen or accepted that typically result in what holds us back. When you identify these limiting beliefs, what happens is again, uh, not identifying them and being hard on ourselves because of it, but identifying what they might be and saying, Oh, I'm so curious about it because if you're here listening to mystical sisterhood, I want you to know that you are being guided to come to your experiences on a journey of uh, not only compassion, but eventually unconditional love for yourself. You know, that unconditional love that we were all seeking as young people. And we're here and now to learn how to give it to ourselves and reflect it for one another. And when we come to ourselves in that manner, these limiting beliefs and outdated ways of seeing ourselves, they begin to melt away. And when we take the time out of our busy lives to dedicate practices to be with ourselves in this manner, that's when we start to uncover the worth and the wholeness beneath it all. It has been there all along waiting to be rediscovered, waiting to come out, waiting for us to come with compassion and unconditional love. And so that question that I asked at the top about how worthy do you feel of living your best life, let's say, it, you know, I, well, yeah, I feel very worthy. Are you crazy? Of course I do. But we we can't see the ways it's been covered up. And so when we do this work of the uncovering and the unshedding and the melting away, and it just um, allows the emergence and, and just like that shiny, that shiny, just wholeness and being and divine light you are just begins to glow more. It begins to shine more. It begins to, it really begins to just, um, the, the word effuse comes to me, like it becomes effusive. It comes out of you. This is the work I do with my clients, taking inventory of beliefs and the ones that hold them back or they feel stuck in and the work of transforming them into a really true and accurate reflection of ourselves. So I wanted to dive into the common beliefs, some of them that hold us back. You might have things swirling in your head already and things that are really true for you. And I think I just said it, but the limiting beliefs really operate below the surface. They might come across in the things we say or do or don't. For example, for a long time, I named my age, and this is when I was in my later 40s. And underneath that, it kind of like incessantly like, well, I'm, you know, whatever it was, 46. Well, I'm 48. There was a belief there because I was in that period of my life where the kids were getting older and I was beginning to honor like, okay, what's next for you? And again, fighting my own way out of that paper bag of not enoughness and, and stuckness and overwhelmingness and all the things. And I really had a belief system underneath that I was getting too old to start something new. And the thing that I love about this is I'm, I'm quite a few years after that and everything um, feels very open to me now. And I really look at, you know, women and individuals across a wide variety of ages and know that there's no cap on any of that. I mean, someone could be 
quite frankly, you know, in their 70s or 80s in creating whatever was new for them. And I love that. I absorbed messages and surely you did too. Let's think about the places they came through. I've named family of origin, but our belief systems come through our friend groups. If you went to any sort of religious institution, whether it be a church or a synagogue or a mosque, or just were surrounded by messages from a religion, uh, the schools that we attended, our outside groups we were part of, they were as you're coming up in the world, they're coming at you and you're deciphering. Um, I think you're absorbing because when you're young, I was going to say you're deciphering which ones are for you and which ones aren't. I think we have an inherent knowing when we're young like that, like, ooh, that one doesn't fit. And I've named that through the last year in a lot of my interviews is like, I knew certain things didn't fit me. And I think like one of the challenges of being like, even when you get into your teen years and what you're hearing doesn't fit you, I think that's a lot of the rebellion that happens and the acting out is because we feel so much that we are being put upon and it's not ours. And so I'm really curious about that. <laughs> that being said, I want to do some parenting episodes again and just like around the kids and, and everything. I'm always loving that topic. So, you know, expect that in the new year that that will be woven in, but th the messages coming from all, and, you know, when we're, we're adults, like we are now, we really get to say, which ones are for me and which ones aren't. We do get to say that. And uh, that's the conversation that I love being in with, you know, everyone that I've come across uh, before, during, you know, this time with mystical sisterhood. The, the type of things that I took on, first of all, where did you receive yours? Think about that. But uh, I think that what I started to absorb were definite messages about women's roles, women's looks. I would say a lot about men and uh, I think patriarch, I can't even say that word, patriarchically, you know, a man's role in a family, let's say ceilings, these are like real invisible ceilings or limits as to what I could achieve, what was appropriate, like I'm saying, at certain ages, and what I was capable and deserving of. So what I did is, I mean, next, I put together a few examples just to put a little meat around this. And here's ones that either came through for me, or I hear from clients often, or both. It's like the Venn diagram, right? My experiences, clients' experiences, shared experiences. The first one is women in your family lineage were homemakers focused on providing care for everyone else tirelessly, feeling overwhelmed. And you took on this somehow through the energy and the ethers that you had to uphold it all. And this has really held you back and limited you in the time you make for yourself in your own endeavors. The second one is you grew up with a version of what smart or intelligence meant. This one super shocked me. I always carried around I wasn't smart enough based on my lack of being able to do school really well as a younger kid, struggling in math classes and going, going to college uh, getting a master's degree, mind you, but feeling very uh, like I was missing certain skills to solve certain problems. But I, I had this like, you know, knapsack I was carrying around of not smart enough. And it really held me down. So not feeling like you're smart enough or intelligent enough, it essentially means you didn't measure up to whatever that def definition was you grew up with. And you never really considered yourself those things. And it's a really big limiting belief. You're not based on the reality that you are an intelligent being as you are. And, you know, that can really, really limit us. However, I think it can be transformed. I think it has helped me sit in groups of women where people have been vulnerable enough to admit that they didn't feel smart enough. Because I think that when I carried that around silently within myself, I thought I, I absolutely thought I was the only one like on some, you know, subconscious level. 
But when I began to hear other women say it, I was floored. I couldn't believe it because I'm like, wait a minute. She's like, she's got it going on. She's all together. So that's a really common limiting belief. And I just really see you if you've ever uh, felt that way and limited yourself because of it. And I think like a piggyback one to that is this third one. And I think it's really big and it is that I'm not creative. And uh, <laughs> my example was your art projects never measured up as a kid. And, you know, certain people were given accolades and like, oh my gosh, you're so talented. You're so artistic. And that's true. I mean, some people absolutely paint and draw and, and do those visual arts better than others. No doubt about it. But unfortunately, that limited view of what creativity was, I think for a lot of our generation and still is so limiting because what I've learned in life is that creativity, like intelligence, comes in so many forms that when we realize that and we let the the lid off of that or we let that cat out of the bag, the sky truly becomes the limit. And that's what that's some work that I really love that um, I've seen clients transform with is looking at like, I'm the not smart enough, I'm not intelligent enough, I'm not skilled enough, I'm not creative enough. And just know that that can be really uh, transformed. This fourth one, I think it is, I'm on, is a biggie. And that's that the women in your family, and this, this could come across in many different um, avenues of cultural conditioning, but the women in your family are the men or a friend or two or three, people you knew, whatever it was, valued bodies looking one way as being the end all be all. And you always felt maybe, I mean, I was going to say too much because I think for me, that's what I felt was the too muchness of my body, the too, you know, the not enoughness of what the scale said or the too muchness of what the scale said. And, you know, for other people, it's that, you know, it's the opposite of that and not feeling, you know, maybe they just having different body images, I guess, is how I'll wrap that in a bow and say that, you know, really limiting beliefs and strong operating systems about being too much in some way or not enough in some way based on someone else's belief systems that were put on us. I kind of did the gamut here because I was taking into account the different experiences we have. And a, another example of a limiting belief I have seen is that as a younger person, you did not grow up witnessing intimacy in your family. And by intimacy, I mean a really genuine closeness of seeing and witnessing another for your experience or their experience. And as adult, you might be coming in, um, not coming in, but being part of a long-term relationship, let's say with your partner or your spouse and that intimacy evades you. And it becomes a limiting belief that it's not possible for us and that it's not possible in the relationship you're in. And that may or may not be true. And it may not be true. And the road that I travel down with clients on that is really doing the deep dive work on intimacy to yourself first and foremost. But it can really, you know, our love models and our intimacy models. And, you know, I think a lot of times with that one, it's not necessarily what's said. It's what we see with those models of closeness and even, you know, how much hugging you saw or physical touch, all these things that really limit the expansion that we can have in relationships as adults. And I named the last one, I could be on five or six, is really that the this topic of ageism and us being too old to try something new. And we are just throwing that out. <laughs> we we are agreeing that that couldn't be further from the truth. I, I have seen myself undergo transformation. I am seeing 
family members undergo transformation, clients, personal friends, and hey, life is getting really exciting for women at, you know, middle age and what we're opening up to. And I really, you know what, I think with the upcoming year that it, it's it's happening for humanity, but we're not too old. We're never too old. We're not too old to experience a new career. We're not too old to experience newness in our relationship or a new relationship, reformed relationships with our children, whether they're young or they're adult children. This is all possible. And I want to say, I wrote a little caveat because my hat and my heart's off to you if your family of origin did exalt you in, in some way where you felt like you really had a parental figure who supported and nurtured you in a way that has allowed you to really excel as an adult because I've seen that too. And just because it wasn't my experience doesn't mean that experience isn't out there. And I believe that the coming generation, I'm hoping, will have experienced that as we live as conscious parents and mindful parents and really just kind of like breaking through the cultural norms or the cultural narratives that have come before this time. And I just want to say kind of, you know, as I round out this episode is most of us are carrying the limiting beliefs that simply are not ours. And let's make a collective agreement to honor ourselves, spotlight what is not yours, give compassion and understanding for our inner children who's so, so, so deserved affirmative messaging, that unconditional love, the safe place to land, and to really do the work individually or, you know, with a therapist or coach to understand yourself more deeply. This is the work that I love to do one-on-one -on -one with clients. And in the new year, I'll be really delving into creating groups for this kind of work. But I believe that so much transformation can be accomplished when we work one-on-one -on -one with our clients, with a coach, and with a therapist, whatever it is to you. But know that that availability is there for you. Limiting beliefs cover up your birthrights. They cover up your wholeness and worthiness and completeness. And it may take new practices and ways of being with yourself over and over, but it is wholly possible. And once we uncover what holds us back and heal those places, the sky truly becomes the limit. And when that opens up for us, it feels expansive. It feels delightful. It feels that we are in awe of our life and what's unfolding in front of us. And you are free to experience what you came here to experience. Joy, abundance, love, play, fun, all of it. I want to know what you want to experience. And for you, what are you most aware of? What beliefs come to mind that are the ones you took on but don't resonate anymore with you? And you are staking a claim and you are saying, I know there's a way to transform this. I know there's a way to transform these belief systems and my patterned behavior and the ways I'm living in my life. And I want to unlock that with these keys Maureen is talking about. Which ones do you just want to blow out of the water and bid farewell to? You're not alone. I'm here for you if you want to explore coaching, to reach out and, and take a look at what personal life coaching looks like. I always hold a complimentary beginning session before I dive into a uh, with a client. And I really live for the moments of my clients' insights and revelations and transformations. So as we finish up today with gratitude overflowing from my heart to yours, I'll tell you that you can email me at hello at maureenspielman.com. You can go to my website and fill out the contact form at maureenspielman.com. 
or follow me on Instagram at Maureen Spielman. Be sure to sign up for my newsletter too, and that will be in the show notes to get weekly tips for living an aligned life and for many of my group offerings. Thanks for being here and being present, and I will see you in next week's episode. Thanks for listening to this episode of Mystical Sisterhood. To learn more about my one-on-one coaching programs or join the Mystical Sisterhood membership, visit MaureenSpielman.com or MysticalSisterhood.com. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next episode.